Hugh Jackman is with us from Swordfish and it's now time to welcome his co-star, the big man on campus, to the couch. He has over 35 films to his credit, including two Academy Award nominations. He has taken the time to fly himself down to the country and take the time to come and chat. We are very, very honoured to have him with us. Will you please welcome John Travolta! <laughs> for coming in. It's a pleasure. So you're a dag. <laughs> you know, I was told that that's something on a sheep's butt. <laughs> but affectionately, it's a good, it's a good thing. It, it, means you're down, it means you're a down-to-earth guy and uh, you're good fun. Good. Well, that's what I hope I am. You are. We are good yeah, fun please, together. Let's forget the sheep's butt. <laughs> no, we had so much fun on this film. But anyway, I'm not talking. No, feel free to join in. Oh, okay. really? I'm good. Yeah. We don't want to frame you out or anything. You just said in the commercial, shut up, move the other end of the couch. Yeah, but <laughs> I was winking. Oh, sorry, right. Uh, now, John, you flew yourself here I for did, trip? and I, ha I think I've had a, a moment in history. What happened? Because I own an antique Qantas jetliner. Yes, Ooh. I know. We've and chatted today, about that. I flew into the airport, and all the employees from Qantas stood out there waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> like an old friend had flown back. <laughs> And it was so much fun to actually have flown this from the United States and to see all the employees who missed the plane. I mean, they had to have been a bit older to have yeah. missed it. But anyway, it was really quite a moment. So when, when you're flying in and you're yeah. radioing into the control tower and you say, hello, this is John Travolta or JT um, <laughs> on, on the CB, do they freak out? Do they not believe you? Well, they're more impressed with the airplane, I think. Oh, really? Yes. So is it an antique? Well, I mean, it's it's maybe 35 years old, but it's, uh, you know, it's what cut the world in half. It's a Boeing 707, and when Qantas first got them, you know, suddenly the, the world shrunk. You could get to England in 30 hours, and you get to the States in 14 hours, and it was a big, very big deal for Qantas to get these airplanes. Have you had any problems with it, technically, if it's an old plane? Well, any plane, you know, you're going to have your average breakdown. You just have to take good care of it. Have you had any problems mid-air where, you know, the Not engine's yet. just died. Not done. <laughs> <laughs> have you flown, Hugh? Have you flown with John yet? No. Mm, well, no, I have. Oh, yeah, tomorrow we are going to fly together. I've flown in the smaller version, but not the big Qantas oh, that's version. Right. Well, I have been on the plane, and let me tell you, this thing is the size of the studio. It is incredible. It's a beautiful, beautiful plane. And probably just as rickety as ours. This is a very rickety studio. You but don't I, want it to be like this. You know, in our uh, time off, uh, Hugh and I would sing songs from Greece. From Greece? <laughs> he, did. he would play Sandy. Yeah, come <laughs> Any particular favourite? Did you have a particular favourite? Uh, uh, do you want it to do yeah. anything? Summer loving had me a blast. Summer loving had me so fast. I met a girl crazy for me. I met a boy. <laughs> well, all right. Let me input. Oh well, oh well, oh well, oh. That's all. Right. So, did you do a lot of uh, singing and dancing the whole time? Because you're both musical guys. I mean, you've mentioned our uh, last time. You know what I love Canada, about love Australians? Musicals? Everybody who is a performer in Australia acts, sings, and dances. It's the truth. How much, how much uh, singing and dancing did you do in the off time on Swordfish? Day one. Do you, yeah. I don't know, know if you remember this bit, but uh, oh, we were doing it all the time. But the first date, we were in this uh, nightclub where my character gets introduced to John's character. And uh, what they do is they play the music in the nightclub, then they dump it. So the end of the first take, it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, John's sitting there and goes, why, why don't we get the music up? So the music gets pumped up and he goes, come on, everyone dance. Mm -hmm. So John gets up. <laughs> He's dancing away, doing the whole thing. <laughs> so I get up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could dance a bit. But oh, I'm just going, there's John, there's John. That's there's John. John. It's good, a good old boy dancing, you can't beat that. No. 
So, um, any chances of doing a music book, musical? Because last time we, uh, you were on the show, John, you were saying that the one thing you wanted to do was a musical. Do you think with movies like Moulin Rouge coming out that they're going to try to reinvent it? You know, honestly, you always hope for that. But the, the truth is, is that Hollywood is very inhibited about making musicals. And I don't know why. I mean, the biggest movie I ever made was a musical, and yet they still resist making them. I think MTV or something has taken over for all that. But on a rare occasion, they make them, and maybe with Hugh and maybe Russell Crowe, maybe we all get together and, you know, sing and dance or something. Oh, gee, Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, John Travolta in a movie. I don't know if anyone would go. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm supposed to say hi to Russell's mother. Her name is Jocelyn. Yep. So, Jocelyn, wherever you are, I'm saying hi to you. Okay. <laughs> She, he asked me to please say hi to her. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, he, he's a dad. He's a dad. <laughs> now, in Swordfish, no singing, no dance, and nothing but shoot. It's a fantastic movie, by the way. You've got to be just over the moon about it. And there's a, a, an amazing stunt driving sequence between the two of you. Did you do any stunt driving courses uh, he did. to do the film? I did. Tell them all about it. Well, the, the, the car, <laughs> this Tuscan TVR came up. Car. Right, it's the size of a matchbox. And John and I looked at it. And I'm meant to be driving, and I thought, well, I better go and do something, because we, have, we won't be able to have doubles in this. So I went and did courses, and there's one bit, probably coming up any minute, where... Handbrake. Not this bit. <laughs> there's no class. Anyway, basically, John's leaning on the, sitting on the front seat with the machine gun out the back, and he's not strapped in, and I'm coming around the corner and losing control of the car, you know, doing the old swish thing. And I said, John, I'm going to lose control of the car. Great, let's go. I said, no, I'm, I'm like going to lose control of the car. And you've got a big machine gun and you're just hanging out of this matchbox car. No problem, let's go. I trust actors because usually an actor that's as good as Hugh is has to be excellent for their own ego. They have big pride in what they can do. So I knew that after his lessons of stunt driving, he'd be great. So I just... Let him have at it. The producer, however, didn't know. <laughs> Came up and had a quiet word in my Just don't forget who the hell is in the passenger seat. <laughs> Be very, very careful. Yes. Well, look, we're going to take a bit of a break. Uh, please stick around. We'll have more from John Travolta and Hugh Jackman after this.